So the EU's going broke. Why? It's pretty simple. Socialism. Politicians, in exchange for getting elected, have been promising their citizens a bunch of free shit that the government can't afford to pay for. So then once they get in office, they need to figure out a way to pay for all this free shit that they promised people. Now, how are they going to do that? Well, the government needs to raise revenue. How do you do that? Well, the easiest way is to raise taxes, which is what the EU has been doing uh, over the last several years. Uh, is continually passing laws that are, are unfriendly towards business, are unfriendly towards the wealthy, uh, are ta- and, and are, are taxing everybody more heavily. Uh, and the result is that businesses and the wealthy are leaving because money's always going to go where it's welcome. Capitalism is the natural way of the world. Nobody's going to let you take their money without getting anything really in, in, in return. Um, And that's what the EU governments are doing. And rather than trying to create business friendly laws to keep governments, uh, sorry, to keep businesses and the wealthy there, they keep trying to trap them. And so in an effort to stop this this outflow of of capital from from the EU and to stop people from optimizing their tax strategies and stuff like that, uh, one of the things that they've done is they've tried to put tax avoidance right along with tax evasion which is just fundamentally wrong. Tax evasion is criminal. Tax avoidance uh, is, is not criminal. Tax evasion is, one of the best examples I've ever heard is, uh, think about a bridge with a toll booth. Uh, you don't want to pay the toll. So you, you sneak around the toll booth in order to avoid paying the toll and you use the bridge. That's tax evasion. Tax avoidance is simply using another bridge where there is no toll. And the EU improperly tries to marry these things to, to marry these two things together to make people think that tax avoidance is somehow bad or illegal and it's the same thing as evasion, which it's not. Uh, It's just that the EU, most of the EU countries are so desperate to protect their tax base uh, because they've promised the, the general public so much free shit uh, that, they, that they need to find ways to, to raise more revenue by protecting their tax base. And so this has led to, you know, our favorite things in the international tax community like BEPS, uh, DAC6, uh, uh, you know, the, the economic substance regulations that are going in throughout the world, CRS and, and, and beneficial owner registers, all this other fun nonsense that, that they've created to try to protect their, their tax bases. And one of the other tools that they use are the EU's blacklist, uh, which in my opinion is uh, really uh, an an unfair list. And I think a lot of people see it that way because it's not objective, it's purely political. So first of all, none of the EU's own members appear on the blacklist, um, like Luxembourg, Ireland, and the Netherlands, for example, which do appear on the IMF's blacklist. There's also other countries that don't appear on the EU's blacklist that appear on the IMF's blacklist. Like, for example, Switzerland, the Cayman Islands, Mauritius, Bermuda, Hong Kong, and I, and I think there's a few others. And one of the, 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 the biggest glaring uh, deficiencies in the EU's blacklist is that the United States doesn't appear on it. And why doesn't it? The EU has publicly stated that it's just publicly not possible to put the, EU, the, the U.S. on it. So... It's potentially a lot of the countries that are causing the, 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 the majority of the EU uh, countries' problems are not even on the blacklist. Uh, and and who, the people that did got blacklisted were mostly small countries that couldn't really defend themselves. And so the EU decided to name them, shame them, and pick on them because, you know, they don't have the clout to pick on people their own size. So now... Many of the countries that were originally blacklisted uh, have instituted measures to get off the blacklist. Now they're off the blacklist and the EU is seeing that they're basically in the same boat as before. Uh, a lot of the things, uh, a lot of these measures that were instituted revolve around economic substance. And so the, the, the EU falsely thought that, well, you know, these, these businesses can't, don't have the substance in these tax haven countries. Um, so the business will stay right here at home, but it's too expensive to stay at home in the EU. So the, what are the com- what are these companies doing? They're going to these formerly blacklisted jurisdictions that aren't blacklisted anymore because they now have economic substance at regulations, 
and they're creating the substance there. I see it every day here in the UAE. And so the EU is still not getting that money uh, and they're never going to get that money because companies just aren't going to stand for it. They're going to go where the money's welcome. So now the EU is realizing that uh, the, the measures that it, it made uh, the, these formerly blacklisted countries institute are really sort of ineffective. They're not helping the EU countries. So now uh, I, I read that the EU, uh, rather than just naming and shaming uh, um, uh, these, these blacklisted countries, which up until now really has just been shaming, there hasn't been any real consequence, uh, are now going to put teeth behind this and institute sanctions. And so every EU country is going to be required to institute one of four sanctions uh, for blacklisted countries. So one of them is there would be a, a, a higher withholding tax on payments to a blacklisted country. Two would be uh, subsidiaries in a, a blacklisted country would be subject to controlled foreign corporation legislation. So for example, um, a parent company may have to pay tax on its tax haven subsidiaries uh, profit, even if, if those profits aren't actually distributed. Um, if there's an income uh, exemption uh, for intercompany payments that somehow exist, if, if those intercompany payments are made to a tax haven, that would uh, not be, uh, the, the, uh, the exemption wouldn't be applicable. And finally, uh, payments for expenses in tax haven countries wouldn't be deductible. And then right after this happened, um, I, I read that the EU is now wondering if their criteria for inclusion on the blacklist casts a wide enough net. And so what I, what I see coming is the EU revising its, its, um, its blacklist criteria to cast a wider net to include more countries. And it could actually potentially include formerly blacklisted countries that got off the blacklist might now go back on the blacklist under this new criteria if, if it does in fact uh, happen and, and, and these new criteria do cast a, a wider net um, to include additional countries. And the one thing that I would just caution the EU about is that's not going to work either, you morons. Uh, you catch more flies with honey. Uh, if you look at the countries that show up on the IMF's blacklist within the EU that you know really should show on show up on the EU's own blacklist, like Luxembourg, the Netherlands, uh, and Ireland, their economies are thriving. The, their economies are doing very, very well. Look at the United States. Their economy is doing very, very well, too, after this, the 2017 tax cuts. And so rather than promising your citizens shit you can't pay for, and then trying to entrap the rich and the businesses to pay for all this nonsense, that you promised the freeloaders, cut your taxes, attract the wealthy, attract businesses, make it a, make your country a, 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 an attractive platform to do business and for wealthy people to come bring and spend their wealth and it'll come and then everybody will flourish. It'll take a little time, but the economy will improve. Uh, the, the general population will benefit from this. Everything will be better. In the end, this is the only thing that is going to work. The EU can try as hard as they want to continue to trap companies, but you have a bunch of people that are a lot smarter than the people in government working against them to try to figure out a safe place to bring the money. Businesses will just never stand for it. It's just never going to happen. People will start smuggling their money out in suitcases with bricks of gold. Uh, so anyway, this is just uh, my warning to the EU that uh, no matter what laws you institute, no matter what um, blacklist you do, uh, you're going to find them ineffective just like you did with this first blacklist because money is always going to go where it's welcome. So make it welcome in your country and reap those benefits. Uh, anyway, that's my, uh, my thoughts for today. Peace.